following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and you are watching another episode on Gen XYZ and as you all know this is a platform where we talk about contemporary topics or issues based on the youth. Now, I'm pretty sure all of us watch a lot of movies, a lot of TV series, and we enjoy it thoroughly. But have you ever thought about the people behind the scenes, like making the film and the efforts that they put into in order to produce this film? And I'm pretty sure like there are youngsters out there who wants to become film producers, film directors per se. So now we're going to talk about this topic and in this program, we have an expert, the Sri Lankan filmmaker, Mr. Buddhi Kirti Sena, who is also the founder of Buddhi School of Arts. Thank you, sir, for joining me on the show today. How have we been? Howdy, partner. <laughs> I heard that you're holding this masterclass as well, and we are currently yeah. in the process of ongoing. So why did you want to hold this masterclass? Well, you see, uh, I was one of the lucky ones that I could go to New York City and study at School of Visual Arts and where some of my colleagues, uh, I mean, uh, who already are, been, already are working in the big industry, Hollywood or wherever it is, and also I got to meet a lot of, um, a lot of other people, artistic people, like I, I worked for composers like Philip Glass, I worked with writers like late Allen Ginsberg, and um, then I met a lot of other actors like Steve Buscemi, who's uh, like from Broad Broadwalk Empire. You know, people like that. Uh, uh, it was a great city to meet people. I got to see the art culture, and this culture uh, it is already embedded with the the whole big part of the culture in uh, in the US. And New York City is a very interesting art and culture based city. Um, so School of Visual Arts where I attended, it was a big time art school. Like uh, you, would, you would get to know like when you, when you meet Pepe and everything. So I thought I'd like to share something like that because some of my, some of my uh, teachers are friends with same times and they were like great friends with Milan Kundera or if you talk about Milos Forman uh, and all these people, so that I was able to get associating people. So I thought if I create an art culture like uh, Buddhist School of Arts uh, can provide like uh, uh, for young people to learn photography, uh, editing, cinematography, creative writing, illustration and all, all these kind of, uh, you know, uh, different arts. So this would be a great place for them to start creating things. Okay, so now you've been in this industry for quite a long time and you have been producing the most renowned films per se where people watch and people are, I'm pretty sure there are so many fans who are watching this as well. So uh, what do you think makes Sri Lankan cinema unique to our people. What are the things that you keep in mind before producing a production here in Sri Lanka? Okay, I'm mainly a director, but I'm also a producer. Most of my films were produced by my father, except for the war movie I did for the last war of Sri Lanka called Martha. And um, um, I am, they call me the outsider in Sri Lankan industry because I'm not a regular Sri, Sri Lankan industry guy. I do, um, my each and every film is totally different to the other so I like to keep it that way otherwise I get bored you know I mean if I make the same movie I'm like <sighs> so um, so um, my my point way of uh, finding the interest is changing the subject so um, 
I think because of that, a lot of uh, Sri Lankan uh, people who are actually looking at movies, they see me as a different kind of a filmmaker than the others, and which is also true because I change my subjects. All right. So now, so you mentioned that you ha did your studies in New York also, and you were there, and you have your experience here in Sri Lanka. What is the difference between cultures in the film industry, internationally and locally? Okay, film is about life. And human beings' needs everywhere is almost the same. You get hungry, I get hungry. My friend in the US get hungry. And they get sad, you get sad, I get sad. You know, the same thing. But culturally, certain things like, for example, when I first went to New York in 1987, I was walking through a um, field and there was uh, a black kid coming forward and he was like, yo, what's up? I, <laughs> nothing, man. I looked up and said, nothing. Then he was like, how are you doing, man? So I didn't know that what's up thing those days, right? So it's a cultural difference. And when I went to America, there was a lot of black people, but when I was getting out of America, there was only African-Americans. So you see the culture changes and it becomes very politically oriented and we are still because, uh, uh, you know, we, we come from different backgrounds. So like that, there are culturally there are different points, but when it comes to human storytelling, it's the same. Okay. Um, now, since you've been in the industry for a really long time, how can you describe the evolution from the past to now? Yeah, the, the Charles the Darwin went and got the monkey. <laughs> and I know, I'm just kidding. The output of production and the production uh, process in a whole. In Sri Lanka? Yes. Okay, um, first of all, um, Sri Lanka had a film industry years before, but now it doesn't probably have a proper industry. Because um, if you'll be surprised, the you know the population of Sri Lanka, right? But you know the population of uh, film goers who went to a movie in the 70s was around almost like, uh, almost like, uh, I would say, the, 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 the things say about 50 million or something. So how that has happened? The same head had been repeating so many times. But nowadays, it doesn't happen and our uh, filmmaking quality has gone down. I mean, a lot of your generation don't watch Sri Lankan movies, right? I mean, that's no doubt because myself and Lakshman Joseph Disaram, you know Lakshman, he's the only composer who managed to compose a Hollywood movie because uh, Uberto was doing Bellamy with uh, Robert Pattinson and all those people. So, um, Lakshman and I went to see Thor and uh, in that, in the interval, they had a, a, a trailer going on. I think it was one of those uh, some Sri Lankan Jatak Kata trailer which, which was big at that time. And when the special effects sequence came, everybody was like, Ayyo! because it looked like special effects. I mean, it, it was like really badly done, right? I'm just telling you, so we are supporting the film goers. We, we are making them less believe in our movies, and they, we, we, we made them believe more in Western movies than our movies. Because that's the problem with creative people. Not nothing to do with. I don't think it's just the audience. It's mostly uh, lack of creativity in our filmmaking. You know. We make the same thing. I mean, same thing is happening to Hindi movies. Tamil movies are taking over. They are very creative. They are highly amazing storytelling. Based. I mean, the same Sri Lankans who doesn't watch uh, uh, singular movies, they watch Tamil movies because they see like, wow, this is really cool and something new is happening. So I think we ought to change our way of storytelling and our way of uh, storylines and everything. And also, by doing that, we need to bring back our audience to the cinema uh, because we have to make them believe that we are back doing good stuff for you. you know? 
Why do you think that uh, it has come to this level? Why do you think the popularity of single <coughs> well, cinematic films? Yeah, I mean, there are a few theories, and one theory I believe is like in the 80s, they started giving loans for film industry. What happened was not everybody who got a loan, not like a loan loan, like your land loan, uh, loan uh, spent all everything into the movie. They either made a house or bought a car or something and the balance they put into the movie and when the bank saw the movie, they just needed to show something filmed and they were like, okay, you made the movie and when it went to the public, they completely rejected it because it was not really a movie. So a lot of things like that happened. That is one aspect. I think the, the, the um, lot of uh, uh, storytelling filmmakers who made like amazingly great commercial movies like Hataradinam Surya, Surya and Getsurya, all these Gamini Mali movies, that stopped they, that kind of uh, movie maker stopped making it was becoming more and more uh, geared towards awards. I mean, film is not just for festivals or for people. Film is for anybody who should be watching it. You know, it should be entertaining. I, I believe it should be first entertaining and then you can say whatever you want to. When you lose that aspect of filmmaking, you're losing your audience because they, they, they get bored. Not everybody wants to watch like some ism, you know, ism in the films, you know, like feminism or whatever the ism. I'm not targeting feminism, I'm just taking it as an example. Marxism and all those isms. So when you take these isms, like, then they become political. When everything becomes political, people just, there's so much um, problems in the country based on politics, when they go to the cinema or something, they don't want the same thing in the cinema. They want to have something beautiful happening. It doesn't have to be Shah Rukh Khan singing and running, but it can be a comedy which is makes sense, you know. What do you think a Sri Lankan audience is looking for in movies? Is it the fictional aspect? Is it the documentary style? No, I think... Uh, Right now, in YouTube, if you take, Winnie Productions are doing the best in the sense, I, I'm not saying they're the best, but they are getting the best views. They are getting like eight, nine million views, something like that. Uh, probably more than uh, Jahan and Block and Dino, I don't know. Uh, so why? Because uh, they are, now Ratta is here. Now, Ratta is also going, getting some, some amount of this thing, but the thing is, people want simple things. Like, you can have a smile, laugh and everything, that is good for YouTube. So, I was, I'm taking that example, so in film also, they, they want things to be light-hearted, uh, you know, not to be bothered about, you know, mind-boggling things. There is always, uh, like, like, okay, why David Lynch is big in America? Because America has 260 or 300 million people. So you pay, take 10% who watch it, uh, David Lynch has <laughs> still 30 million. We have uh, 20 million or 22 million people, you take 10%, it's like 2.2. .2. And out of that 10%, there's another 10% who watch uh, only that, that sort of movies. So we are lack of population also. The singular speaking uh, people are little, only in this country. If you take Tamil speaking people, they are in, uh, they are in many, many places, uh, in uh, Chennai, I mean in the sense in, in India, in Malaysia, in many other parts, South Africa, there's like uh, everywhere. But singular speaking only here. So to make a movie uh, viable, you have to make it very commercial. But if you don't make it commercial, then the industry can't survive because the producers start to leave the industry. Because, see, if producers are there, not every producer, but most of the time, in, in this business becomes an industry. So if we don't have a film business, there's no industry. So that's why maybe Chandran and them who are bringing people into the country uh, uh, make a great uh, 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 value because uh, when Spielberg and 
um, uh, Lucas came to make Indiana Jones the Temple of Doom, it was amazing because this became a studio and Spielberg himself had said that every 10 miles is like a different you know, kind of a look of the country, it can be a studio. So, so that's another aspect to we can do is promote Sri Lanka to as a film location and bring more people down here and then obviously local industry will also develop because when I did Martha I had uh, one person who worked in Close Encounters of the Third Kind with Spielberg and then I had some other people who worked uh, uh, in uh, I think it was Oliver Stone or something so they come and work with our people our people slowly elevate their knowledge and which is great so it's like uh, you know, then our industry will also go up. As a film director, what talents do you see in Sri Lanka in terms of acting? Now, you spoke about Malini Fonseca also and people remember her still. Malini is like the Gary Oldman of uh, <laughs> Sri Lanka. I mean, she's, she was so versatile, she was like everything. I asked Malini, how do you just do this sort of acting. She said, Ani danne mali me me way apni kaya gaga unna Lenin Morai sari ka orke na mali is your take now and tagga lekar lay lay baad you know. So she had it in herself. Samanli is a good example because she's also got a lot of talent. So now I find Mahendra is amazing. Actually, I call him the local Gary Oldman because uh, he's so versatile. But I, I don't think anybody came to Manli's level, but now Manli doesn't act and you know all these things. But Mahendra is extremely talented and uh, the, the whole gang I worked in Middle Soya, they're pretty good. And right now I'm doing about to do a TV series before I go to my movie. And uh, there's this kid called Pradeep Ramavikrama who they call from Ayadam Mandala series Mania, and he's also very good. He's Mahendra's second in command in the act, actor studio school. So it's it's, it's good. A uh, lot of good talent here. Do you uh, can you say the same thing about the young people who are coming up to this acting industry as well? That the young people I've seen like so many young people getting into the acting career, and uh, young faces are showing up on TV. What can you say about them? See, there's a difference uh, between the that these so-called, I hate to call it teledramas because I would rather call it TV series, but they're not serious about series, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the teledramas is a different crowd. You know, they uh, should look beautiful, uh, nice, handsome. So it's the looks mostly. And their acting is also, some of them are good. But so when they pick up talent, they t try to pick up the good-looking ones, right? So they, they probably miss the good talent when they do that. So I don't always keep teledramas, I hate to say that word, teleseries. People are responsible for shaping up this country's acting performances. I think it's a lot more than that. There's people who are coming from Singhala and English theatre and also other people who come in different ways. Okay. Um, I think now in the second segment and third segment, we'll be joined with uh, uh, Pepe Dankwata Pepe, yeah. as well, the award-winning uh, uh, film director. Oscar-winning filmmaker. Yes, that's <laughs> great thing. That's that's an interesting story as well. How you became friends with him yeah. and how you got to uh, got him to come to Sri Lanka to do this uh, masterclass as well. So before that, we'll be going into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen X Y Z, and we will be back soon. Gen X Y. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Welcome 
welcome back to Gen XYZ and we were in discussion with uh, Boodhi Kirsi Sena and now on our second segment we've been joined with uh, Mr. Pepe Dankwath who is the Academy Award winning filmmaker. Uh, Mr. Pepe, thank you for joining us on our second segment on this program again. Now to uh, start off this discussion, first of all how do you like Sri Lanka? Is this the first time you're here? No, I'm the second time here, but um, it's the first time. We, in the first time, he was shooting a big movie, so we couldn't oh, meet. And uh, so this time, uh, he was inviting me, and I was sure that I met him. So it was oh, a reason coming right. up down here. So this masterclass that you all are conducting in collaboration with the Buddhist School of Arts, what's this about? It's, um, you know, I get to know that there is no film school or art school, you know, in this size, in this country. So, and... Um, I like the idea that Budi is establishing um, a film or art school, you know, in a bigger scale than only film. Uh, and I want to support him. So um, <coughs> this masterclass is about filmmaking, about documentaries, feature films, um, how to do it for beginners and experts. There is a lot of, uh, you know, a wide scale of um, uh, of um, participants of this uh, masterclass, you know, beginners, but also professionals who are working um, a long time in the industry. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Um, it's a wonderful place, this uh, barn studio here, and um, I thank to Budi that he, he has organized and uh, financed all these kind of uh, events happens here. So, Mr. Budi, how did you get to know Mr. Dankwad and how did this relationship come into play? That's the interesting question. Well, you see, um, Pepe was, you were making uh, Pulandi, yeah? Yeah, well, I did a film in India, Pulandevi, and, uh, uh, and he did his uh, diploma film yeah. from... Uh, First uh, film, uh, Wales of Maya, Sina Deshi. 91 or something like that, 1993. All right, so while directing a film, did you all get to know each other? No. Yes. He was directing and I was finishing off. And he was waiting to get his films, uh, what do you call it, developed, developed and printed to take it to Germany. I was getting my sound to be finished so I could come to Sri Lanka. All but, right. But we both had the same scenario, right? Exactly. We've been in big shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now since both of y'all are in the same industry and both of y'all are renowned uh, filmmakers also, um, what can you tell about the talent available here in Sri Lanka and what do you think are the characteristics that a filmmaker needs to have before getting into the industry? Um, I don't know the, the scale of, uh, this is uh, a question uh, Budi has to answer. But uh, I saw um, or realized that there is a lot of talent in the, um, uh, in the master class. And um, I think this is uh, the principal thing you have to have if you want to go into um, the industry. You have to have talent. And you have to have the passion making films because filmmaking is not only fame, it's a hard work thing. And uh, only a few percentage of those who started uh, the filmmaking uh, succeeding in it. So uh, it's not a job guarantee study if you study this. Uh, you have to struggle. So you have to have the fire in you, really want to tell, tell stories with film. If you have that and you have the talent, you can start a career in the film industry. All right, so what makes a filmmaker very special and to bring them to a level to become an Academy Award winning filmmaker? First, he has to believe in itself. Second, he has to believe um, in the skills. And second, he has to know how to do it. Mainly, above all these three skills, he has to love people. And if you don't have the love for people, you you are in the wrong place doing um, a film because it's all, like Buddy said it before, it's all about emotion. You know, people went to cinema to have and feel emotions. And if, if you do it this with actors or without actors, documentaries, or if you do it short or long, it doesn't matter. It's uh, all about emotion and your love that you, uh, to people and help them. That's, uh, you know, film can help film can put the finger 
uh, on uh, the violence uh, of society, which is wrong, which is wrong, which is going wrong. You can look at poverty, you can see on hard work people, not only the clamor, you know. If you have all these in you, maybe you succeed and to be a success. Luck. And a bit of luck, yeah. Luck is also important. Has uh, luck been in favor for both of you all in this industry? But for me, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, uh, I did a short uh, um, a movie about uh, racism in Berlin, and I won an Academy Award, which you know changed the game rules. Yeah. You know, from that point on, uh, you are an established filmmaker, and you got the money, and you got the opportunities, you got scripts, you got uh, offers to do a movie. So that was luck. All right, so if a young person needs to get into this industry and they want to become a renowned filmmaker, oh, what are the things that they need to keep in mind and what is the foundation for them like to be ready for in this industry and what are the characteristics or uh, future components that they must be ready for? First, you have to get to know a little bit of life. If you're coming out of school, you know, you just know the, your teacher and your family. So what can you tell? You can about a story about the teacher and about the family. But that's not, you know, for me, one of the principles is you have to have some experience in life. You have to, to tell stories to other people who are interested, uh, to get them interested uh, in the subject you're doing. And um, I think you have to overcome obstacles. You don't give up. If you have to have the fire in you to overcome obstacles which are always occurring if, while you do a, a, a film. A film is like an avalanche, you know? When an avalanche starts, you can't stop it. When you start a film, you can't stop it. Otherwise, you're dead. That's right. So what are the main challenges or difficulties that a young filmmaker should be prepared for? That it's not only fame, that's not only the red carpet, it's not only uh, because uh, it's hard work. It's uh, really hard work making a film, but you, nobody thinks about how difficult it is to make a film ready for the big screen. You know, when it appears to the big screen, it's already a success. It I think uh, what Pepe told you about uh, life, you know, understanding life and experiencing life, because film is all about life. It's full of life, it, whether it's what not, whether it's human beings or whatever it is, even if you take a cartoon, it's about life. Even if you take a jug and a tea kettle and some other thing in a cartoon, it's still again about life. So f since film is about life, having an experience in life is very important because to show uh, certain emotions with people, you need to at least you have experience. Then if you, if you, if you come, at, come through and experience a little bit, then it's easier for you to work with others and get that experience across to the audience. Uh, my uh, other question is now, uh, other than the uh, passion you have in becoming a film uh, filmmaker, what are the other um, characteristics that you need to have, the basis, like uh, financial-wise, equipment-wise, um, technology-wise, people-wise? Oh, you mean not uh, characteristics, but more like uh, support? Support. Yeah. You know, um, since the, the technique changed from uh, the uh, 35, 60 millimeter analog media, the film film, to digital, not only the rich kid, could be uh, filmmakers, what it used to be before. Now, every, it's a democratization of uh, filmmaking because today everyone has this thing uh, in his hand, uh, <laughs> this mobile. These mobiles nowadays are 4K. They, they can do things which we are dreamt about uh, 20 years ago. So, and if you do this together, if you have a friend, another friend, um, you have three cameras, and uh, if someone has a, a zoom, like a little, you have a whole entire equipment. You can start a movie if you have a good idea, if you have a good content, and if you have the talent to tell a story. So, what I want to say is, 
if you not only want to show the sunny side of the world, if you have a real something to tell, content, you can do that immediately. You know, I, I remember when I was in the US, I mean, that was um, when film was not even digi digitalized. It was somewhere in 95 when I came back. So people used to say, like, if you want to do a movie, either you should have a rich father, rich friend, rich uncle, rich aunt, or you should be rich. Because that was the only way you could make it. And now he's saying there are other ways you can make it because of digitalization. But what do you think about the opportunities available for filmmakers? What Not just uh, in Sri Lanka, but uh, worldwide. Opportunities? Do they, do they have the platform? Now here in Sri Lanka, it's very minimal. I think uh, Mr. Buddhi can add on to that as well. Like the opportunities available for them to showcase their talent. Yes, but it's not only about showcase, you know, we are talking about filmmaking, real filmmaking, art house movies, uh, you know, documentaries, which is a piece of art, the art which of the 21st century. It's not painters anymore. And artists have to have a critical position against society, against reality. They have to show that uh, the mainstream is the mainstream, you know. Of course, nowadays are the platforms of the social media. You can go to YouTube, you can go to uh, Instagram, you can uh, uh, recreate followers, followers. And if you have one million followers, hey, there is something right, because otherwise you don't have a one million followers. But um, um, how many uh, YouTube videos goes into the air every second? Do you know that? That's amazing, millions. millions. And only one or two or three get through to a widespread audience. So um, those are clever, smart. Maybe they have to tell something which is uh, interesting for a mass of people. And that was before as well. So at that time they have to pay to go to cinema. And I know I saw uh, cinemas in, uh, uh, in, uh, in India well, the queue was uh, four times around the block. And um, uh, nowadays, the, the streaming uh, um, uh, companies, you know, Netflix, like Disney, HBO, they, they become and, uh, coach potatoes, sitting yeah. home and uh, looking all that, that, that stuff. That the, cinema is, experience is not there. Anymore. The cinema experience going down a bit, uh, which I felt very sorry about it. What is your inspiration from both of you, if may I uh, pose the question, in filmmaking, what inspires you and motivates you to become uh, this filmmaker? I, was, um, I realized very early when I was in school that I have a talent to express myself through images, you know, painting, photography, Super 8 movies at that time. And um, when uh, uh, I finished high school, I was thinking what to do in my life, and I decided to become a filmmaker. What my parents didn't like, because it's uh, always the same, everyone tells you that, that uh, parents want you to have a real job, like architect or yeah, doctor, doctor or lawyer. lawyer or whatever. But I thought that was just a problem here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all over the world. It's all over the world like this. So, but then uh, I became uh, one of those who made it. So uh, now my parents, they passed. Unfortunately, about, since they were alive, they would be proud. That what because. Um, but uh, I was always interested at the edge of things. For me, the you know the edge of things, what could be told, told, you know, society, uh, people who are at the borders of. Uh, public interest, all these kind of stuff, it was interesting me. And I had the talent to tell these kind of stuff with images and this is film. Was it difficult for you to break that barrier and follow your passion? No, that, uh, I was lucky in my life. So at uh, certain points I, I did the right thing and uh, uh, I had the right people around me. I'm not from a rich family because I was going into that adventure um, uh, without the background of... Uh, but this is a different uh, country where I'm coming from. You have the ability to go to film school without paying. 
um, uh, you get uh, money from loans. the state, losses, student loans. student loans, and all these kind of stuff. So it was only my skills, if, if I am happy. And afterwards, uh, I became a professor, and uh, I give at the art school. And uh, as a professor, I try to give the skills back to those kids who are coming up. So that's, you know, it's all about um, experience. I read yesterday at the studio in Colombo, life is all about experience. And if you made oh, yes. a lot... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this little uh, photo boots, you know, you guys like, uh, five minutes pa passport sh photos in one of those booths he read this. Okay, now. And I said, yeah, that's right. And uh, my experience to give back to a younger generation who was following me was uh, at a certain point very important for myself. All right. Thank you for that insight. But we have to continue this discussion. But before that, we are going into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we've reached the last segment of our episode and we were in discussion with uh, Pepe Dankwat who is the Academy Award winning filmmaker and also Buddhi Kirti Sena from uh, Buddhi School of Arts. Now uh, in the second segment we were talking about what inspires a person to become a filmmaker and the challenges that they need to be prepared for as well. Now uh, coming into more technical details, when you think about producing a film uh, what is the minimum time uh, required to put out the final product? It depends. It, it, everyone is different, but uh, I need about two years. Two years? From the beginning of the idea to finish a movie. That's that, uh, mm, one full movie. So, uh, do you all set uh, timelines to achieve certain targets? No, no. Not really. No, it always depends on the subject and the content. Uh, you know, when one movie I did uh, was a road movie, uh, which I was nine weeks with my crew uh, uh, on the street, and then uh, you finish that. And uh, the last movie I did for three years, uh, following an artist, uh, was a you know a long-term uh, documentary, uh, which needed four years. So, and I did both, uh, you know, overlapping. So. It was again two years, two years. <laughs> but Pepe, I'm sure when you did like your, the, the bo what was that, a boy, one boy, one? Or yes. Yeah. That's like a, like, like a feature film. So you, in that, you probably had more pinpoint uh, timing or? Oh, yes. Um, if, if you do it in this, yes, you had like, what did you say, 40, 50 days? No, I mean from uh, pre-production to going into the cinemas or, or, or distribution, whatever it is. Uh, the, 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 yeah, that's pre-production to, uh, to the point of two years also. Again two years, oh, okay, so. Or at least a year post-production and then uh, going into cinema. So while producing this film, what are some of the main challenges or difficulties that you have to face? It's again, if you, uh, it's time. Sometimes it's really off the time, you know. If, if you do a feature film, um, you know, you are depending on light. If uh, you need a lot of shots for uh, one uh, Einstellung, you know, how do you call it, one shot, and you do it 20 times. Ah, well, if you have a mise en scene, then, mise -en -scene. then you are kind of, uh, yeah, you have to do the whole thing again. And uh, if the light is again, so time is an uh, enemy of you and uh, the preparation, you know, building up the set. Uh, that's all these kind of stuff you have to manage, uh, which you can't uh, do in advance. What do you enjoy about being a filmmaker and uh, what is the uh, side that you want to pick up? Now, um, I, you told me before the program that you are producing all sorts of films, feature programs, short films, documentaries. What do you enjoy doing the most? I do all most. It's the same question there. Which kind of your three kids you love most? <laughs> you yeah. say, oh, I love all my kids. <laughs> True. So it's, uh, you know, sometimes um, the subject forces you to do it in a documentary. Sometimes, if it's a period film, 
you have to have it to do it as a feature fiction film. And sometimes you have an idea which is not going over 30 min uh, or 90 minutes, so short you do one. it short. So, um, but all of them are important. And every th film I did was only possible at the moment when I did it. You know what I mean? You know, if they occur at a certain moment and they have to come out of my body and my mind, not 10 years earlier and not 10 years later, just in that moment when I did it. Uh, how do you make sure that your films stand out from the rest, the uniqueness? How does it depend from a person to person? <clears throat> we, we, we are calling that in Germany the handwriting of an author or uh, the handwriting Auto of... films. Yeah, it's a style maybe. It's yeah. uh, the way you are shooting, it's the way you are telling the stories, like, like in literature, you know, like uh, Cross or other people have a certain kind of finding the words and I have a certain kind of shooting and uh, storytelling and this is the uniqueness I, I believe I do have that people can, ah, this is a Pepe Dunkwart film, you know, without knowing that it's a, a Pepe Dunkwart film. Do you consider of a target audience where you want to put out the film to? Do you take that into consideration when producing the film? I, I think no. Uh, actually, not really that I have a target audience, but I think the audience is m much more clever than people think. <laughs> or true, commission true. editors thinking. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think uh, I always have in mind that this is an adult audience who can think, who, who can uh, associate, uh, so that uh, I believe, or I have fame, not fame, uh, belief in those that they understand what I tried to tell them. Okay, so has there been a difference in the way you express your films towards your audience throughout the years compared to 20 years ago to now? I believe that my, my lecturing at, as a professor at school <coughs> university. At the university, yeah, it was a, a, a film school university. Changed a bit my uh, my attitude how to make films because when you always and that was important being in contact with young people. You know, the, my students were between twenty and thirty, and they have not broken down up to that point. You know, they didn't had uh, uh, um, disadvantage. Uh, so they wanted to have everything and they are very arty, you know, like art as art and not commercial. Hardcore art. Art for art. So this changed a bit my, you know, the teaching. I changed a bit the attitude and the filmmaking and the look of my movies. All right. When considering the crew that you have to put up, I mean, get together in order to produce a film. Um, how has it been the management between your camera crew to directors to actors? How do you pick them out? Look, after a while, um, the biggest capital you can um, assume as a director is not money. It's the bunch of colleagues and talented. Uh, so I work uh, together with a bunch of group like my DOP. I have two DOPs, a sound man, the production manager, which I trust. You know, over the years there is a sort of a family grown up, which I don't have to look by any new film uh, uh, for a new cameraman. So this is uh, something which I accumulate uh, better than uh, money. Uh, another thing now, when a young person thinks of becoming a filmmaker, what do you think they need to uh, think about first? What do they need to keep in mind when coming into the industry? That it's a hard job. <laughs> All right. So we are running out of time as well and we are reaching the end of our program as well. So to end off our discussion, is there anything that you would like to give, like an aspiring message to the young filmmakers out there? The young filmmakers here in Sri Lanka, I uh, give a good suggestion, attend the Buddhist School of Art, which they have a very good man uh, with a lot of experience and a good heart uh, to the world. And uh, I think that's probably a good first step to come in. 
All right, thank you so much. Then I hope you visit Sri Lanka again and put up these masterclass in collaboration with Buddhi School of Arts yeah. as well. And uh, thank you so much again. I wish you all the very best with uh, the upcoming films as well. Thank you. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We'll be back again next week with another uh, issue or topic relating to the youth. And just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night.